today we'll be discussing on uh, designing the search experience uh, with Sitecore and Kaveo. Uh, let me click on. Uh, Madhu, I'll let you introduce. Hi, everyone. I'm Madhu Anbarhan. I'm a 3x um, Sitecore technology MVP, working as a Sitecore consultant for tech systems. Um, you can reach out to me in LinkedIn or Twitter. Um, happy to be here. Thank you, Anandita and organizer, for this opportunity. Much appreciated. Hey, I'm Balaji Kandasamy. I'm a practice director at CEI. Um, also, two times uh, Sitecore MVP. Um, I have a blog, Bala.1, and can reach out on Twitter or LinkedIn. Thank you for the opportunity today and taking your personal time and attending this session. Okay, we'll dive in <clears throat> to the topic. Uh, uh, we are going to cover the following topics here. Uh, what is Coveo? Why do we use Coveo? And what's new with the newer versions? We have the version and pricing, have some implementation strategy, installation and demo. We'll also walk through their cloud platform and uh, certification related and we have some questions. There is a lot of topic here that uh, we are trying to walk through. So we'll, we'll skim through those topics and if you're specifically uh, interested in certain areas, so I will be happy to answer anything middle of the session or during your uh, Q&A session. Okay, what, what exactly is Coveo? It's a, um, uh, you know, Coveo is more like an additional uh, search that is provided for Sitecore. Uh, Coveo is not mandatory for Sitecore, but uh, if you need a better search experience, uh, it's much better than Solar. It has fully integrated relevant solution uh, using the Sitecore search APIs. So we're not doing anything new. Uh, the existing Sitecore search APIs will be used uh, for Coveo to uh, index items or uh, do the search API calls. Uh, second one is uh, unified index and AI powered search capabilities. When I say unified index, it is not specific to uh, Sitecore. So this Covio can be a uh, unified index for different sources, which means you can have Sitecore uh, indexed or you can have your blog site or a uh, YouTube or different kind of sources can be integrated into one platform. That's why they call it as unified index. Uh, we personally have run into multiple situations where we need to have like a WordPress site and, and a YouTube channel also to be uh, uh, integrated into the general search experience of a website that's uh, that's Sitecore. So this is a very powerful uh, functional piece of uh, Kaveo. It has native indexing capabilities, uh, which means uh, it does support multi-site and multi-language. Um, native, when I say native indexing capabilities, it's all related to Sitecore out of the box. Uh, it will be able to do that. Out of the box search controls. There are a few controls that are provided and uh, we'll go through in detail in the uh, upcoming slides. Um, that can be utilized directly in SXA or MBC. That is uh, provided as a control suit by Kaveo themselves. It does also have XTB integration, which also implies that it can be used for personalization. This is just a general overview of a diagram. Uh, you can see that it covers most of the areas. Uh, if you see in the left bottom corner, when it says Kaveo Cloud Unified Index, you can see different uh, input sources are there, like Salesforce, Oracle, uh, Sitecore, uh, multiple uh, sources are available. I think close to 30 or 40 sources can be crawled with Kaveo. <clears throat> Uh, and then you can use the profile and you can see uh, moving uh, top up. Uh, it's using different profiles and the profile information is curated for the search results. It also sends the data back to uh, X XTB. And then uh, on the right hand side, you see the unified interaction. So every interaction that you do is integrated into the uh, Kaveo usage analytics, which means like when the search is executed, the search results is being clicked or any interaction. So when you do a search and you scroll through the page and then you pick the fourth result or fifth result, uh, all this information is fed into the Kaveo machine learning <clears throat> and the model is fine tuned. For example, if you're doing a search and then you click only the fourth link and every user is doing the similar one, then automatically Kaveo pulls that search up top knowing that, hey, this is the result that they are looking for. So that those kind of uh, automatic uh, relevance tuning and everything is handled by uh, Kaveo Machine Learning. 
So wh why do you want to use Coveo? The main, we did go through the unified index. Uh, the second one uh, important we use is the predictive search. Most of the clients are very interested with this. Uh, if you have a search box and you want to ta start typing something and then you want to see that automatic drop down being populated with the search results or search query terms. And that's an important thing most of the clients are interested with. Uh, better accuracy and relevance. So <clears throat> it knows that when you're doing a search and what results being you, you are clicking and then it automatically relevance. The relevance is automatically tuned. So it is not something that manually being done. Optimize automatically. There are certain models that you can set like a three months period or a, a six months period or like you can choose it. And the default timeline is three months. So it automatically optimizes the search queries and what results are being clicked and the machine learning will automatically fine tune itself. And it does support multi-region. Uh, that is something recent, uh, like last couple of years back it came through. Uh, mostly uh, for European territories, they don't want to keep the data in US data centers. So those kind of uh, <coughs> mainly supports the EU. We do have uh, out of the box integrations. Um, which means uh, they have a, a JavaScript framework that could be utilized. It doesn't mean it's just specific to Sitecore. It can be used in other places as well. Uh, more personalized results according to your previous search. Uh, Kaweo can identify who the person is, what they have searched in the past, and and has its own personalization that can be utilized. It does uh, it does support containers. So uh, Docker based hosting is also supported by Kaweo. Unified index, this is a sample a sample set that Coveo does support. I don't want to name everything, but you can see there's a lot of different uh, input that could be utilized. Most of the things I personally have used is uh, sitemap, and then I've used uh, site core. You can typically use a generic REST API um, that could be used to crawl, crawl the content and they could be utilized and push API is something that you can push the data back into Coveo, rather it crawling crawling the system backwards. Um, let's go into what's new with Coveo. In the recent versions, uh, they have uh, they have come up with the <coughs> Coveo query suggest. So once you start typing, you can see the regular query suggest is there, and you're also getting this uh, nice preview of the component like. Uh, uh, the preview of the results in there. This is specific to uh, Coveo Commerce, but it can be also used with regular site code. And then um, this is something really exciting that uh, it's the dynamic navigation. So once you start typing, you can see typically the facets are always fixed. Whatever you define, it's going to stay there. But in this case, you can see the facets automatically change according to what you're searching for which gives much more uh, better search experience. We have a hosted search page component. <clears throat> hosted search page has there for a very long time. Recently, they came with a component that could be uh, directly added to a website. Um, in our case, in Sitecore in SXA, they do have this component where you can add it and directly point it to one of the pages. And you can see all the designer, I'll be showing this uh, uh, demo. But this whole designing is all done in Kaveo platform. And then you are directly injecting that into your site code page. So there is not much of development here. You're just doing all the designing, drag and drop, styling, everything can be done there. And you are utilizing directly in the uh, site core page. So let's get into the architecture. How does this work? Uh, focus on the numbers here. The first thing you can see uh, application data being sent to the index. So uh, Kaveo is directly crawling the application data. It can be Sitecore and other indexes that goes first into the indexing. And then you can do number two is, again, the other sources uh, other than Sitecore. Number three is where the query pipeline. <clears throat> so when a user is uh, trying to do a search, it goes through a pipeline. Similar, uh, you can think this more similar to a Sitecore pipeline as well. Everything goes through this pipeline and this pipeline has a lot of functionality. I will be going through in the demo that uh, you, we can make utilize of. 
So we do have something called a search hub. Search hub is one uh, place where uh, a particular search page and uh, site and everything is grouped into one small bucket that specifically uh, fine tuned for that particular search results. You can have multiple search hubs. Um, that is also used uh, to uh, for the relevance tuning and uh, search prediction and everything. So we do have number four. Uh, once you do the search, you get the results on the search interfaces. And then anything you do or interact with that goes back into usage analytics. Eventually, that ends up in machine learning, which fine tunes and then gives the relevance results back. So this is the overall architecture here. Moving on, we do have uh, different versions of Coveo. Uh, version 5 is the latest one. Uh, version 4.x is uh, being deprecated. Uh, one other uh, important thing is uh, version 4 is the one that supports ASP.NET Web Forms. And recently, it also deprecated all the analytics related uh, data that is being pushed. So it is not supported anymore. If you are using Coveo Sitecore 4.0 then or anything more, then it should be migrated over to 5. And in, another important change with 5, uh, Coveo for Sitecore 5, 5x does not support ASP.NET. So if you have any older sites that you need to come up with a solution, um, that solution is pretty much using uh, Coveo hosted pages. I will walk through that. That is one quick and simple way to integrate Coveo into any website. Uh, it can be Sitecore or any other website. You can easily integrate Coveo. Uh, it does support MVC and it has a SXA package. It does also support JSS. <coughs> Containers are obviously supported. Uh, from the pricing aspect, <coughs> earlier it used to be pro and enterprise. Uh, now it has been shifted to Pro Plus and Enterprise Plus. Most of the things uh, to be, uh, uh, you can see the cost starts at that range and it's always for the enterprise platform, it's a little bit different. Uh, but mostly uh, the main thing to focus here is uh, the queries per month. So every predictive search is also counted as a query or anything, uh, any regular search, everything is counted as a query. So we, you might think, hey, 200K is pretty high, it's pretty good enough, but uh, eventually we'll run it out faster. Uh, from the connectors aspect, you can see there is a Sitecore connector plus two cloud connectors. Um, that is also limited. So if you are OK with one Sitecore connector and then just a sitemap or a different thing, then it will be fine. But if you want to have multiple connectors, then you might need to uh, get into the enterprise platform. And then there are some recommendations, uh, ranking editor and XTB integration that's specific to only Enterprise Plus. Uh, by default, uh, Coveo comes with a sandbox and a production instance. So you'll always have a sandbox uh, where you can make changes and then you can eventually promote it to the production. And for developers, uh, you have to always go with the trial version. Uh, earlier, it used to be a 30-day trial period that often runs out and then it's more cumbersome recently they came with a developer edition which has a 90 day trial period so uh, you can register and then use it for 90 days only limitation with that is uh, it has a 20k items limit while the index is crawling and also it will go to sleep if you don't use it which means uh, today you're doing some search queries you leave it the next day you come in it will say the uh, instance is being uh, instance is sleeping and then it, it picks it up in like a couple of minutes. But one good thing is like you don't have to do this every month. I personally have uh, always run into issues when you really need it and the trial expires and you need to do the configuration, re-index everything, it takes a lot of time. So at least I'm okay with this 90 day trial period which, which the system goes into sleep. Uh, there are different implementation strategies. Uh, Coveo Search UI. Uh, Search UI is nothing but a general uh, JavaScript uh, UI framework that can be utilized to, uh, you can add the reference and then you can use those components directly with just general JavaScript. And the second option is you can go with hosted pages uh, that can be directly injected on our website. 
uh, i'll give you a demo on that um headless headless is a uh, uh, a raw Java, JSS uh, library, which means it gives much more flexibility that you have to do everything. It's not like a wrapper, it's a raw, uh, for example, in a search box, if you want to uh, take care of the uh, entry event for doing a search, everything has to be done in headless manually. The good thing is they have built all the components and they are available in React. And that could be used as a starting point and it's an open source project. And the last one is Atomic. That is something recently they came up with. Atomic is more like a wrapper on top of Headless, where if you don't want to do a lot of customization and you want just a simple wrapper quickly spin up something, Atomic is, uh, Atomic is easier to use. One caveat with Atomic is uh, in Headless, <clears throat> you get access to the raw uh, DOM elements. For example, you have a dev, you have a H1, uh, everything you can access but in atomic they are wrapped into a shadow dom so what what shadow dom means is like i'll give a quick uh, thing it's more like consider that it's an iframe uh, it's not exactly iframe consider it's an iframe running inside a dom so the common concept of iframe is you cannot access an iframe or any components within that from the parent side it's the similar concept so in atomic if you have a development <clears throat> which is running in a which is running inside a shadow dom if i don't explicitly give you access you cannot access or make changes which means styling is much more complicated with atomic so i've done all four options personally i don't recommend atomic it's not fully baked yet and it will take some more time we recently did an implementation with the atomic and it was really painful and we reverted back to headless after like a couple of uh, couple of uh, sprints So it's an installation and demo. I will pass it over to Madhu here. Thank you, Balaji. Let me share my monitor. Are you able to see my screen? Yes, we can. One second. Let me collapse. <coughs> cool. So, um, Coveo installation is very straightforward and easy one. Um, so here is my uh, site code 102 instance. Uh, it's a vanilla site code instance. I just installed it using the SIA, site code installation accelerator. So uh, once I installed, um, then I just need to install the Coveo as a site code package. Um, so I'm just going here as a package designer. And um, I have downloaded the site code Coveo package for site code 102. So, oh, not the package designer, sorry, the installation wizard. So here you can see the site code, Covio for site code 10.2, and then this is the Covio latest version, and um, just installing it as a site code package. And accepting the um, terms and conditions and clicking on next and it shows the Covio package version um, author and publisher and once i hit install um, it installs the package it takes five to five i mean few minutes to install uh, but here i'm just going to cancel because i already have this installation so um, basically so one once it installs um, i just have a blog about this um, so basically the steps um, on how to install the Covio um so the same thing installing the package and uh once after the installation is done it automatically pops up the um model like saying activate Covio for site code package so when we click on it it takes it to the site core um authorization for activation basically it goes to the platform.covio.login so when you go there, you can actually um, log in with your um, Microsoft online account for the client purposes. Um, but here for the demo purpose, I just used my Gmail. So I just logged in using the Google account. And um, I don't have any site, I mean, Covio form or anything created. So uh, for now, I just logged in and authorized Covio access for Sitecore. 
once I authorize, it says that Covio activation is successful. Uh, once it's successful, we need to configure the Covio. So um, let me switch back over here. So once the installation is done, um, I'm just going to the control panel. And uh, if we go to the configuration manager, um, so basically you will you'll see a new section over here called Covio search. And underneath you have indexing manager, uh, relevance manager, configuration manager, diagnostic, um, support, and about. So I'm going to the configuration manager, and it asks to log in. So let me log in. Um, so it's actually automatically logging in, but then um, basically you will be logging logging in using your um, Google account or the Microsoft account, um, wherever you have been associating the Covio uh, indexes. So here it's uh, my Gmail account. So uh, creating a new organization. So I just give like um, demo um, SUG Bangalore. Um, and I can go for the organization type enterprise trial or pro trial. Um, basically, this uh, this has the pricing and things which Balaji has showed. Um, I just went with the organization. It has like 90 days um, trial one. Um, um, if you're trying out, this is the be best option to go because uh, it doesn't expire in 15 days. So um, just went with trial organization. And then I just logged in. Um, I, I just need to say apply and restart. And uh, what you will see is um, the, um, um, the organization name. And it's been associated with the Covio Cloud. So once it's associated, basically, um, uh, basically you can go to the platform Covio. Just a second, let me pass through this into a. Let me go to the Covio platform, and uh, you will see the organization is associated. Um, so here is the platform Covio, and you can see that um, this is the demo SUG I have created, and you can see that um, this is the organization ID it, it's been associated to. And uh, when I come here um, to um, actually somewhere, you can see the see the organization ID. Maybe if I log out, I mean, I'm not sure where I can see the organization ID as well. I'll come to that point later. So basically, you'll see the organization name over here and the indexes. Um, so once that organization is created, then I come to the index. And you'll see that the Covio master index and the web index. And um, since it's a vanilla site, I don't have much documents. Um, but the first time, I just rebuilt all of them. Um, this takes uh, 15 to 20 minutes, but you will see the stages as um, it's setting up the requirements, sending the permissions, documents, documents validation. So once the indexes are done, you will see that the indexes are ready to go. Uh, it shows like how many items and um, the, uh, the, um, the size and stuff. Um, so this is for the default one, and you can add as many resources as you like. As you can see, I have added my blog and Bala's blog over here. So um, you can add your YouTube channel. You can add like whatever you like to add, like uh, AEM, uh, anything, anything you like. Um, so for a web, it's uh, pretty easy. Um, like we just put in our website or blog site, and then you can just name it uh, whatever you like to name it and uh, start indexing. And you will see that the number of items and the size over here. Um, and um, Balaji will be showing the site uh, setup on um, how to um, how to search on the sites. So this is about the basic setup. And um, once that indexing once that indexing is done, it's all ready to go. The search page is available, and you can start searching on the site. And uh, when we come to the fields. Um, it just shows the regular um, Covio fields. And uh, if you want, you can go with an, any external feed as well. You can um, you can import some external feed from um, any external organization, and you can import the fields. And uh, computed fields is like a regular site code. Computed fields, like where you combine the uh, fields and um, show them here. This is all by the default uh, settings. I haven't changed anything. Um, and the site code credentials. Um, 
whatever the site code credentials you will um, use it over here you can pretty much almost guess my password uh, the default site code password the indexing permissions and uh, the roles and all like i just went with the default one um, and um, the relevance tools is all about the ai and machine learning when you need an advanced uh, the data training and the data model and um, set up like that for advanced options um, the Covio cloud organization we have already seen it and uh, the indexing options um, either you can go by the html or by the indexing data and um, here is the form name i have given um, you can go with uh, any form name you like um, i'm just going by the default options just to make it simpler and um, uh, and also when it installs basically it installs the covio um covio folder inside your app config um so i'm here at the app config uh, include covio and uh, you can see that there are um configs um it associated so basically inside the config you will see that um the organization id this was the organization id i was talking about and the covio uh, api key and the search api key so if you have any issues, um, basically, uh, you can go to the diagnostic uh, page, um, which is super helpful. Um, whenever you see that the indexing is not happening or um, when you log into the Covey organization, if it doesn't show up or anything, this is the page to go. It, uh, it takes a minute to load, but once it loads, it actually shows um, every single instance, what's running, what's not running, what's the error. Um, this is my favorite page, and um, if you have any issues that you can you could not resolve, then you can create a support package, uh, like how we do the site core support package, uh, site site core support ticket. The same way we uh, we do it with the Covio support ticket, and uh, here is the diagnostic package. Um, so you don't need to uh, zip up the um, uh, configs and everything. Here it's a ready made. Um, ready to go package um, which downloads and you just um, describe the issue and attach the uh, attach the package and um, uh, cover your team uh, support team should be all ready to go to uh, look into the issue so I just wanted to show this page um, how helpful it is um, let it load um, meanwhile I just wanted to explain the uh, some of the configs um, so these are the three main config files where you need to trouble if you are troubleshooting it you can um, pretty much these are the three ones um, three configs which you will take a look so um, the second one is as you can see the form name the site code admin uh, the username and the password encrypted um, just to make sure where the issue is this these three configs are like super helpful and um, here is the Covio platform urls um, basically, these are the two configs which are um, super helpful to make sure that your organization ID, the API key, and the site code login, everything is um, associated with Covio, um, Covio form. Um, okay, it's still loading. Okay. Maybe I need to be more patient. And um, the resources and support, uh, this is where you go and create the support package. Um, it has a lot of uh, blogs and uh, all the resources listed down. So here is the documentation, release notes, question and answers. Here is the support one, um, So which takes it to the support portal. And you just log in and create your support ticket. And uh, this is pretty much all about the um, Covio search um, configuration perspective. Um, yeah, this is where how we can help you and just go in here, log in, and then you go into the help and support, atta attach the, um, the support package uh, that's being downloaded from here, and it's all ready to go. I'm not sure why this is taking longer time. Um, so let it load, but meanwhile, I just wanted to show it over here. Um, so um basically some of the status over here some of the things over here so 
when you're uh, when you're looking for the site core indexing either you can go into that um, indexing manager and you can do the full index or if you have some a specific node to index uh, like say for example the content author has created some new pages and they wanted to make sure that it's been indexed yeah here is the page so see everything the servers and everything is enabled up and running and when it errors you will see the red dot and it it actually describes what the error as well and it shows what is the site code version um uh, covio version and organization name organization id and uh, what's the count uh, like it has all the details and here are the site code configuration files these are the files, but then uh, you pretty much look into those uh, two or three files, which I showed um, has all the config setup, which um, which uh, which is uh, quite helpful. And uh, published status because it's a new instance. I haven't published any of the site core items. That's why it's showing like this. Um, here is the site core index I was talking about. So when you need like specific pages that's been created and you wanted to uh, you wanted to index so you can pretty much give the path and um, you can just index those particular pages um, this is super helpful as well when the when the content author says that they have published everything but then the the, the pages aren't showing up in the indexing so you can quickly go ahead i um, mean go here and index the particular pages and see on the search results that whether it's coming or not um, and also you can see the site code log from here. Um, so this is the latest uh, log, like today's log. And um, if I say view log, uh, it basically shows the log um, right over here. We don't need to go to the site core um, logs, especially in the production instance where we don't have a permission or going to the Azure uh, portal and doing the stuff. So. Uh, basically, we can go here and look into the logs and see what the error is. Um, don't worry about my uh, XDB errors, um, just not set up properly. And uh, here are the indexing list. And um, as we can see, the Covio master index is showing here and uh, is Covio is S and shows the assembly and information. Uh, the same here shows in the indexing manager, the regular indexing manager as well. Um, so when we go to the regular indexing manager you can see that the two of the indexes are added over here so either we can do the uh, indexing from here or from the indexing manager um, or the particular node from the diagnostic page as well so this is all about the um, site core installation i mean not site core installation covio installation and uh, setting up the covio with this i'm just passing out to balaji let me figure out how do I um, share my screen or stop sharing my screen. Okay. Thank you, Anandita, for taking it over. Sure. Or Balaji sure. taking it over. I'm not sure who took over. No, 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 that's fine. Thank you. Okay, welcome back. And uh, I just logged into um, the portal here. We'll start and go through each menu item. We'll try to quickly cover everything. <clears throat> So uh, the sources is where you can see all the sources. Um, here you can see two site core sources, and we also have uh, two sitemap related sources. Mother did walk through about uh, adding a different source. Um, we did add these two. If you see one as a WordPress blog, and one as a different uh, ghost platform, it's another blog. So it doesn't matter. You can add multiple instances and have everything as a unified index. This is one example. Uh, the next one of uh, is a log browser. So in the log browser, if you go, a uh, lot of times we would be um, like the content author saying, hey, this item is not indexed or anything. You want to detect what's going on. Uh, as soon as you hit the index, you will be able to see whether the items are passing and you can see the item URL here. Typically, it goes into multiple stages. You can see these stages. And anytime the data is coming from <clears throat> our local instance to the cloud, it senses it as a send it as a batch through the push API. That's the internal working. So it will be more in the pre-indexing, and then it will try to map the data to the fields, and then the actual indexing. And if there is any conflicts, it's detecting that. And then finally, it's the consuming stage 
So once the consumption is completed, that's when the item will be available for uh, for uh, available for search. Uh, you can see the URLs here, and it goes into different detecting, mapping, processing, pre-indexing, and indexing. Then we also have this consuming state here. And you can notice this one as going as a batch. So it will be sending like 100 items per, per batch or something like that. <clears throat> uh, that is one. And going into the fields, another important thing and a common mistake that people would do is um, the fields, whatever in Sitecore, are, are available here. And also the fields that are from my blog or other places also are available here. For example, let's take one of the fields and then you can click on edit. <clears throat> and you can see it is being used in these many places. And it can be a facet or multifacet or sortable. And then you have all these options here that you can enable. Keep in mind, if you change anything here, <coughs> When the Sitecore is doing a sync, this will get reset. So anytime you want to change anything on this field, you have to do that in the field definition in Sitecore as a config entry. Otherwise, every time you make a change, okay, let me make this as a facet, and then I hit save. Then whenever Sitecore is doing indexing, the first step it does is it will sync all the field, and then this will automatically reset back to a normal non-facet which I have run into the first, like when I started Kobe, I didn't realize this, I made the changes, everything is working, and whenever the next indexing, everything broke. Then learn it the hard way. So anytime doing field or field-related changes, you need to always do. Here you can typically do this for quick testing, but I would not recommend do that. <clears throat> and also it clearly says, uh, oh, is it being as a facet, multi-value multi facet? These are all important, otherwise, if these are all not chosen, then it will not be available for you in the facet facet uh, component or something like that. It will not be listed. I'll show you that. Um, going into the content browser, this is another important area. When you're doing any debugging, this is really helpful. <clears throat> so you can see this here. I can choose the master index. In this case, it has only two items. And then in this item, I can just click on properties. And you will see all the listed fields here. Uh, one new change with uh, Sitecore uh, for Kaveo and 5.0 is like all the fields are not indexed by default. Only the standard fields are being indexed by default. So if you have a custom field and that needs to be indexed, then you need to define that in the config and say like, I need this field and this is a normal field or a facet field, you need to define that. And this is quite helpful to check whether your data is coming into Kaveo index or not, each field. This will be a replica of what, <clears throat> what is there inside. So in this case, <coughs> you can check my uh, blog and you can see all the concepts. And this is just a regular website. And it automatically crawls. It picked up my uh, title. I picked up my URL and then other field values. And this URI hash is something that is always unique. That's how uh, Kavio identified this entry as a unique entry in index. That's something to be aware of. Uh, so this is one area. Um, another important thing here is always uh, when you say you want index and quickly come and check here, uh, the drop down you can say sorted by index state. And you can see this. Uh, Madurana, Koveo, reindexing, and you can see those items coming up top. So this way it is quickly, uh, it is easier and quick for you to debug a particular issue. Moving on to the, <clears throat> uh, moving on to this extensions. Here is again, um, trying to add a specific uh, script here. You can add uh, additional extensions to Koveo platform. I personally have not used this. <clears throat> Um, security identities, uh, at the moment, it is uh, supported with the email. Uh, by default, uh, we use the Microsoft Identity Provider, and uh, typically, you you will have an email, um, which is a Microsoft email, then you can use that. Uh, so you can have the same username and password with your Active Directory. That is, uh, that is something you can use. <clears throat> uh, crawling modules, I have not 
used. So <clears throat> commerce is something, this is a, a enterprise trial. So that's the reason I have everything enabled. Um, commerce itself, it's its own category that uh, uh, we're not covering today. Service now is also related to any <clears throat> So it's now related cases and everything gets crawled here. And so when a customer service representative is searching for a specific, for example, you call a customer service and they say, hey, this is not working and they could use this particular option and then they can go and search for a particular case and find some data around it. Uh, that is one. Let's get into the meat of this. Um, we have a search <clears throat> query pipelines. If you remember, I was talking about this earlier. Uh, first and foremost to remember is do not use the default pipeline. By default, Covio gives one, but uh, the recommended best practice is to create a pipeline specific to each page uh, where Covio is being used. There is a reason for that. You can click on that, click on edit. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so it gives you, uh, you can do A-B testing. Um, so showing like a specific results or ordering to see what hits and then it can choose and there are like groups and campaigns here that's also specific to boosting your results up when a specific campaign is running so that that result gets the more hits common things we use here is thesaurus and stop words um, this is a very common thing that you would really want to use uh, if you want to add stop words you can start adding them here Thesaurus is uh, if you have uh, certain keywords which also map to the same keyword here you can see <coughs> robot uh, is also a uh, bot is also a keyword for robot or robotic is also a robot so you'll add the thesaurus so that way if somebody is searching for a bot they would still get the results of robot result ranking this is something you can always boost the results uh, you can have a feature results or a ranking expression. Feature results is specifically, if I'm doing a search for a particular keyword and you want the results to be always up top or as a first result, then you can use this option. A ranking expression. <clears throat> Here you can see there is a weightage. Uh, there is a basic mode and there is an advanced mode. This is something commonly I've used uh, for in this case, uh, a scenario where a search title, a word in this particular title, if I'm searching for that and if it matches the title of the blog post or something, I want the result to be boosted. And uh, you can give the numbers here. So as long as you have multiple uh, ranking expressions, they all combine together and then it will boost the values. <clears throat> or sometimes if you have a stock word and you want to, you know, uh, give a negative score, the automatic the results will move around one good functionality is here <clears throat> if you do a change here uh, for example let's try this uh, one moment I'll go to the basic mode I'm saying about this block here So whenever I do changes here, then automatically the search, you get the preview. <clears throat> okay, uh, is this one, then I need the category to be increased or something like that. And then you do the preview results, then automatically that reflects here. I think it's going the other way around. Source is this thing, and then I can do this. Do add role. So this is added. So anytime it is doing a search, then it, this particular pipeline, and this pipeline is used in my specific search. So that's the reason um, I was talking about having pipeline specific to each search page. Uh, coming into this uh, machine learning. <clears throat> so here I have not created anything at the moment, but uh, you can create a default machine learning. When you say create a new model, you get all these default ones. Uh, most commonly, we use this automatic relevance tuning and then uh, query suggestions. Uh, and these two are the common things by default we'll add. It's just
And then it gives you an option whether you want to do weekly or other data period as three months, which is the recommended approach. And then every week this will do the loading interval. I don't want to add anything, just to add. <coughs> uh, here it says associate pipelines. So here you can see the search hub, suggestion filters and things like that you can change. But by default, what I typically do is uh, when I start a new pipeline, I will start with the default pipeline. Uh, there is an option to copy that over. So you can click here and you can say duplicate and then you can start from there. And if you go into that, uh, interesting. Okay, in our case, we did add it to the default. So that's the reason. Okay. So you still need to add that uh, machine learning model, those two models that I talked about, automatic relevance tuning and then the query filter. Another important thing here is in, uh, let me go back to my pipeline. Uh, <clears throat> so you can see here, I have added an advanced query that um, filters to my blog. So anytime anything comes to this pipeline, by default, it will only return results to my blog. That's the reason when I was doing the result ranking, it was not helping with when I gave mother's name because my query filter was only showing my blog. You can also add query parameter rules. Whenever you see a query parameter, um, uh, depending on the user context, it will update automatically. Uh, the ranking weights <clears throat> is also the same way whenever you see a particular title, uh, the text word, the search term matches the title or something, then you can give the weights for the ranking. So automatically the results move up and down according to what it does. Triggers is something like whenever something happens, you can trigger an event, um, which typically, uh, for example, a common scenario that I've used is specific word. If I search, I have kicked people to a particular site, more like a forced re redirect. That is a common thing I have used in the past with the triggers. Uh, moving on to the conditions, um, it's similar to you can add conditions. Uh, the important thing uh, we'll talk through quickly is uh, the search pages. This is called as search hosted pages. Um, I will show two options are there, one as classic mode and one as regular mode. <clears throat> Last to authenticate. Okay. Let's see if it works or again it's oh, really. All right, what the delay? Give me one moment. Okay, it worked. <clears throat> so this is a modern uh, design, and you can see this. I can click on this. Uh, it gets into this mode. So you have these following options here. When you click on content, you can either choose by the source or in this case, uh, you can see where the pipeline is working. In this pipeline, I set a user source to be always my blog, and that's the reason you're seeing only my blog items here. And when you head into the search, <clears throat> here it gives an easy way to show us as a grid view, list view, however you want it. And then there are like the default template and uh, a custom template where you can choose however design you want. And whichever fields you want also you can choose. <clears throat> It's a simple way to do it. I will also show you the advanced mode, how you can design this whole interface. And uh, using the <clears throat> filtering options, you, here it clearly says you use the dynamic navigations and the facets is turned on. And then in the sort, you can see that uh, I've used the relevance and most recently you can add a custom sort as well. 
on a specific field. <clears throat> These are the fields that we saw in the Covio search interface. So you can choose whichever field you want and then uh, can give a label, do ascending or descending. And the same way in the facets, you can do the same. You can add a particular uh, author and then, then say, uh, done. In this case, there is not a lot of <coughs> author field. Maybe I'll do a, I did change this one, did not come custom. So this is a custom facet I chose uh, uh, data here. Going into the uh, colors, it has some default coloring, primary and text, and uh, you also have a logo that you can add. This is pretty basic vanilla. Uh, and then once you save this and this page can be directly ingested into a sitecore page or any different site, just pointing it to this interface. I'll quickly walk through the other one. So this is much more powerful than what we saw. <clears throat> it's a classic editor, more developer friendly. You can see it gives more like a SXA kind of a thing. I can drag and drop. Uh, so it's already there. So I can drag and drop or add more components here. You can see any filter expression. And whenever you see this, you can say what oh, source equal to this thing, then I can add multiple tabs that I can do. And also clicking on each component here, you will get this options to edit. And then each one has uh, multiple features or uh, things that you can change. And each one has its own tabs as well. Uh, also, you can see each one of these components can be moved around. <clears throat> it's more like a drag and drop. It's a simple filter that I can add here. And then I can say, <clears throat> And then I can choose whichever field I want and then say, okay. And then it gives me all these options. You see that? So the main advantage of this, let me show you that one. When you go to the code view, it's a raw HTML, which makes it much more developer friendly. So if you want to add a different thing or move things around, you could still do everything here. <clears throat> How this internally works is whenever a search page, search hosted page is there, it typically gets this uh, content and internally um, get the skeleton and then internally it uses JavaScript uh, framework to instantiate all these components. That's how it typically works. Oh, this is good. Uh, these are the two important things. Machine learning, we did go through that. Uh, analytics, I don't have a lot here, but uh, you do get a, a summary of uh, the search results that happens. Uh, the most important thing I want to cover is the content gaps. So a lot of times the search is not taken care as much with the content team, but at content gaps is something that you can look into what searches are being made. Is the result showing up or not? And for example, if I'm searching for a bot and I never received a result, I walked out of the website. So you're losing customers there. <laughs> So content gaps is one area that gives a typical score of um, a particular defined score. And if it is below that, then um, it's something that we need to look into. And uh, Covia does have a quarterly meeting with every client where they go through each one of this and give some guidance on how that could be improved. And visit browsers <clears throat> is the same. Uh, Visit uh, what what has been done and all the visits and everything is tracked here. <coughs> Go much over here. Running out of time. Uh, with the organization, you can look into the settings, and then you can see what query is being used, and then you can see the limits here. Uh, four is used out of five. The field limit, and uh, three hundred thousand is the push call uh, push API. This is something. Every day when you're doing indexing, this is the top end limit that you can push data back into the cloud. Since it's a SaaS platform, they have limitation on certain things. All the data can be looked into here. Groups is where uh, you have all the permissions and adding members to It's more like the sidecore roles uh, that you can add people to. At the moment, you can see both of our emails here. In my case, it's email, and mother is using a different provider as Google. Temporary access is something you want to give somebody a temporary access. Um, most of the, <clears throat> mostly Covaya support has access. 
um, they will be okay. But if you want to give somebody a temporary access to your org, then you can use this. API keys is this something uh, you might be need. You will need this for um, JSS. Whenever you're configuring Kaveo, you will have to come here and add a key. And then uh, privileges, then you can give uh, default privileges, admin search, and certain things. So in this case, uh, you will have to have the search, because that will enable certain things. <coughs> Allowed impersonate. And then it will also need to enable <coughs> execute queries and also you need to give this analytics push data access so this is uh, important when you are uh, working with JSS uh, when you add the key it will show a grid that can be like visible only once and then it will not be able to see it again so save it um, so you don't have to run into issues activity browser is something uh, who was doing it uh, any activity that happened on the platform uh notification uh license limit reached um instantly this is something like when we are trying to add more more sources uh, you will get these notifications resource snapshot is something really useful you can create a snapshot which will take a backup of all your query pipelines all the settings and those settings can be shifted to another platform basically if you have a sandbox you can create a snapshot and then that snapshot can be implemented or uh, put into a production instance. This is something new that they came with. Earlier, uh, every time we do a query pipeline configuration, we typically do it in sandbox, and then we follow the same steps documented in production instance. <clears throat> At least this helps to bring production data back into, not the data, just the settings and everything back into a sandbox. I think that's all I had with this. Uh, we did go through this one. Um, I'll let Madhu talk about the certification. Hey all. Um, so the certification is again so simple. Um, so you can take the site core, I mean, not site core, sorry. Kobeo training in person, or you can do an online training. Um, so I have done the online training, which is called level up training. It has its own modules and uh, smaller, smaller modules. It's so easy to do. Uh, it wasn't hard at all. And uh, once I once I'm done with the level up training, I went for the Sitecore ex uh, Covio exam. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just like used to the Sitecore and just um, so Covio exam is um, easy, I would say, because it's an open book exam, not like Sitecore exam. Um, so it has 90 questions and three hours limit, and the pass mark is 70 percent. So um, and even if you fail the Sitecore, I mean not Sitecore. <laughs> Covio exam, you can still take it on another time. It's a free of cost. So what happened to me was like, um, so once I'm done with the level up training, I wasn't sure how hard it was the exam was because it was saying the open book and was it like really hard or uh, I wasn't sure. So I just thought I'll just give it a try. Even if I fail, I can do it again. Second time there is a chance and I can pass the exam as well. Like in between, um, you can pass the exam. So I thought like I'll give it a try and um, pretty much like out of 90 questions, 50 questions or I mean half of the questions were in Google, um, but not all of them. So um, I, I mean, I would say it's pretty easy um, as compared to Sitecore. Um, as long as you're done with the training and you have some little experience and even if you don't have an experience, you can just uh, create your own. Uh, sample um, demo um, Covio one like how I created and you can explore and then um, you can pretty much take the exam and if you fail don't worry about it you have next chance to do and it's a free of cost um, well, how would you go for and join the Sitecore community and slack uh, which is super helpful for asking questions and answers um, and, and also I want to add one more thing for Covio there is a separate slack channel that could be added. It's not specific to Sitecore, but uh, they have a Sitecore channel that you can talk. It's not our regular Sitecore Slack. They do have their own, uh, Kobe has their own Slack channel. Great point. Question and answers. Uh, just a quick one from me. Is the level up training and uh, as such first attempt also, it's free of charge or is there a cost associated? Yeah. No, everything is free of cost. OK. As long as you register, you can log in, and there is a skill path that you could choose. 
at the moment, uh, the Covio certification is for 4.0. Um, they have not upgraded in a very long time, but uh, <clears throat> as long as you know the platform and uh, do the training, you should be able to get it done. Nice.